So use our talents to serve others. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, just as we explained, so we being many, many are one body in Christ, and every one members of another. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the only other chapter other than chapter uh, 12 of Romans, where there's a thorough discussion of the various gifts that were given, he says here, verse 14, for the body is not one member, but it's many. Then skipping to verse 21, the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee, or the head to the feet, I have no need of you. That should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Mm, isn't that powerful? Every member should have the same care one for the other. And whether one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. One member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Have you ever noticed that when your finger hurts, your entire body hurts? If your head hurts, the whole body suffers with it. If you can't sleep at night because you're having a hurting finger or a head or whatever it might be, have you noticed the rest of the body has to stay awake also? And he's saying that's the way it ought to be spiritual in the body of Christ. If one member hurts, then all the members hurt. If one member rejoices, all the members rejoice with it. So use our talents and our abilities to help all the other parts of the body. You see, my hair can't comb itself. It takes another part of my body to do it. It takes a comb within the hand, doesn't it? You notice that a mouth cannot feed itself? Sometimes it takes a hand to get it up here, doesn't it? And can a foot put a shoe on and tie it by itself? No. It takes the other part of the body to take care of that part of the body. Isn't that a beautiful picture of the way the body of Christ is the function? That each part is looking out for the other part and says, if you have need, here am I. If I have need, there are you. And, and so he's saying then use our talents and our abilities to serve the rest of the body and use our talents and abilities to serve the Lord in general. And I put this up here to remind us. The old adage, you use it or lose it. And that's just basically the case. If we use our talents and abilities, they grow and grow and grow. If we do not use them, they get less and less until they are not available. That's just the way it is. Now suppose for just a moment, that I decided that this right arm, I will not use it. And so I tie it down to my side. What would happen in six months? I could not move that arm. Why? It's, it's not active, not being used. And so if we don't use what we have, we lose. And so the same with our talents and our abilities. Number five, hate evil. Cleave to that which is good. Here's specifically what he said. Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Greek word for abhor is a very strong word. It means to detest. Absolutely, utterly, utterly detest something. So look what he's saying. You absolutely, utterly detest that which is evil. And so Psalm 97 verse 10 correlates with it. Ye that love the Lord do what? Hate evil. Dislike it? No. You hate evil. Proverbs 8.13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And pride and arrogance, an evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Psalm 119 verse 104, through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. So you see, the Old Testament taught that same concept as Paul is teaching in the New Testament. Now, the key is found in Revelation 2, verse 15. To one of those seven churches he's writing, he says, So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. Now, here's where we have a problem. If we aren't careful, we will not only hate 
the sin, but we hate the person who sins. And that is so wrong. Hate the sin with a passion. Utterly detest any and every evil way. But we still must love the person who practices that sin. Why? Because God does. Jesus did. You know, he died for sinners. Have you noticed what, what the Bible says? Jesus didn't die for the righteous. He died for the sinners. And we have to love everybody, but detest every evil way. So abhor that which is evil, but cleave to that which is good. Now, the you know, American Standard Version used the word cling to. You ever seen a little child cling to his mother? You just can't get that child away. He just clings to it. That's what he said, cling to good. And then the English Standard Version says hold fast to. You get the impression, hang on to it. And I've kind of paraphrased it. Cleave to, adhere to, cling to, hold fast. Be glued to that which is good. So here's the distinction. Anything bad, we hate. Anything good, we're to cling to it, be glued to it. Hang to it, cleave to it, cling to it. Whatever words that we wish to use. And then finally, number six, and we'll close the lesson today. That is show... I think I misspelled this. Should be show your love. Uh, show you, no, I guess it's correct. Show you love your brothers and sisters in Christ. Outdo one another in showing honor. Specifically verses 9 and 10. Let love be without dissimulation or hypocrisy. Be kindly affection to one another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Another version says, let love be without hypocrisy. Be devoted to the another in brotherly love, giving preference to one another in honor. So what's he saying here then? Another version says, let love be genuine. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. When it comes to loving the brethren, he simply says, do not be a hypocrite. Don't act like you love the brethren and then Treat them another way. You ever notice how love acts? You can easily see what love is. Just watch the action. You know whether it's love or not. So he says be genuine. Don't be a hypocrite about it. Don't speak love with your mouth, but practice the lack of it with your body. That's really what he says. Secondly, love one another with brotherly affection. That is, like a family. Have you noticed how families love each other? How they cling to each other? How they rush to each other when there's a need? He says, look, take a look. He said, you are a family. You are the family of God. You are a family. And so, again, if one hurts, all hurt. If one is honored, everybody is honored. And that's biblical. 1 Peter 1, 22, Seeing you purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit unto the unfeigned, and I put up here the genuine love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. The word fervent is from a, the meaning of a, of a, a, original from a meaning of a stringed instrument that you turn that string and you turn it and turn it till it gets this so tight you just feel like it's going to snap. That's what fervent means. It means intense. So, unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another intensely. Intensely. And the third thing in this verse from Romans 12, outdo one another in showing honor. And as I've indicated, it denotes that esteem in which one Christian should hold of another. It ought to be high and unselfish and free from envy and jealousy so that we love each other with a genuineness, with the absence of all envy and jealousy and strife or anything else. But there's just that solid love one for another. Thus the Bible teaches. And so I find here in, in the Roman letter some powerful exhortations. Let's review them briefly. Number one, he says, offer your body a living sacrifice. It's alive, but we don't own it. 
It's been given in service to God. Secondly, live differently from the world. Don't be conformed to the world. Live totally different from the world. Number three, don't think of yourself too highly because of your accomplishments or your looks or intelligence or money or possessions or, or family status or whatever it might be. But do love yourselves because of what you are inherently, a good person that surrendered their lives to the Lord. Love yourself because of that. Fourthly, use your talents and your gifts and abilities for the Lord and for his service. Number five, abhor, hate that which is evil, cleave to, cling to, be glued to that which is good. And number six, show your love to brothers and sisters in Christ. See if, if you can't outdo each other. And, and I, I, I also, just to illustrate it, I also advise this for family members, particularly husband and wife. See which one can outdo the other being the kindest and the gentlest and the lovingest. What would you have at home? Heaven on earth. What in the body of Christ if we did the same thing? Each one of us tried to outdo the other in showing love and concern and care. What would happen in the body of Christ? We'd have a touch of heaven on earth, wouldn't we? Brethren, is this scriptural? Right to the keep, scripture, isn't it? We really need to work on these things. So follow these directives from Paul, and our lives will be different. Now, if you're not in Christ, I do want you to look at this verse. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are become new. As we talked in class this morning about repentance, there's a total change of attitude towards serving God before we're baptized. We die to sin, and then we're baptized into Christ. And then we are put him on in baptism. For as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So it may be that you've looked at your life and you want to begin the walk of being a Christian. This is the beginning point that you repent of your sins Knowing, of course, that Christ is the Son of God and He's your Savior. Repent of sins, a change of mind, and having your body immersed in water for the remission of sins. From this reading, from the first ten verses of Paul's writing to the Roman brethren, I get a distinct impression that serving God is very serious business. Do you? That He means business. And He means to make ourselves His. Totally surrendered to Him and to His cause. And as we talked about in class, I'm yours, Lord. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to live? How do you want me to act? How do you want me to react? How do you want me to speak? Whatever you want, Lord, I'm yours. Maybe we're Christians and we really don't think that way. Then we need to repent. And maybe our confession to each other and praying to each other for each other would help us to overcome it. A lesson is yours. Let's stand. Let's sing to each other. Respond if you need to.